Yeah, hello and welcome to this Squid Tip tutorial. Here I want to share with you some tricks and tips that we used to make this little chipmunk here, uh, Robin, talk. And we did this of course with Auto Lip Sync. In case you need a more in-depth tutorial of Auto Lip Sync, I recommend looking at the Talking Tree tutorial or the Talking Car tutorial. You find both of them on mamoworld.com. And um, here I really don't want to cover all the basics, but just look at certain uh, special cases and tricks that you might need in your work. So the first thing is in this scene, you can see that the talking Subscribe. chipmunk here is filmed from the side. Yeah. So the question is, how do you make such a side view with auto lip sync? And if you look in the composition, you can see that the head layer on which I applied auto lip sync, yeah, just so this is just a normal footage and I applied auto lip sync and I've set one corner of the mouse before the chipmunk so actually outside of his head and the other one here and while now it looks like a normal uh, mouse from the front view uh, if you cut away this part here it perfectly looks like a side view and it's also nicely combinable here with again uh, teeth and thumb yeah so we have here the nulls created by auto lip sync and here's this mouse interior if you look at this alone you can see we have here these teeth and this which are just uh, solid layers yeah and while the chipmunk is talking you can see the thumb is moving automatically with this thumb null well, all these together build this uh, nice talking mouse. And you see we have here some problem. Namely here, the, the hand is somehow deformed. And also, of course, here the background is deformed, which are both things that we do not want. Yeah? Therefore, we just have in addition here such a matte layer to, to remove this entire part here. So if you look at it, we just have some mask here. And this mask is rotoscoped here a bit to follow the opening and closing of the mouse. And this layer is on top of this entire composition applied with stencil alpha, which effectively means that it cuts a hole here in the composition. And all you need to do then in the next step is that you put this uh, composition into another composition where you again insert the full uh, background clip such that this hole here is filled again. And that's all you need to do a side view. Yes, I know what you think. Now, the next interesting uh, case is here this clip where the mouse is hidden. Yeah, so let's quickly look at it here. So we have the chipmunk which is uh, hidden here and you can see it still moves uh, his head. And you might think for this you don't need auto lip sync, but since you have a subtle movement here, it still adds a lot to the shot if you have this movement, although the main part of the mouse is not moving. How we did this, I think this is pretty easy to understand. So we have here some foreground element and if I hide this, you can see that behind this foreground element, the original, um, or we have just insert a regular mouse uh, that is here opening and closing and is simply created with auto lip sync. Of course, this time I didn't bother about inserting any T's or something like this. And also uh, for this, so the only special thing maybe is that you need to enlarge the chipmunk a bit to, to yeah. So I mean, you need some more chipmunk material here that is able to move upwards. Otherwise, when the mouse is opened, there is not uh, some more chipmunk nose showing up, but actually some ground moving up and down, which looks a bit strange. Yeah. So you need to enlarge the chipmunk uh, here in, in, in this area. And how do you do this? Well, I have here the original chipmunk and from this one I've cut it out simply this area here and then I've placed a copy below that I just moved down a bit just to make him larger. And then of course you want to apply the mouse, so the auto lip sync effect, not neither on this layer nor on this layer, but it needs to be applied to both, yeah, so to the result of both. Therefore you could either take those two layers and pre-compose them and pl apply auto lip sync to the pre-comp or what I did here is just applying auto lip sync to an adjustment layer on top of them, yeah, such that we have here now the, re the mouse, the talking mouse on top of uh, both, so let me enable here it, yeah, so it affects both this layer and uh, this layer. And then finally we place the foreground on top of it to get uh, the final composition. Subscribe to Mamoworld's YouTube channel. Subscribe.
That's why I'm talking here. Subscribe. Okay, the last scene that I want to share with you is here. If you see, at first he is not moving very much, but then he is really going crazy, moving his mouse uh, everywhere, yeah, and talking simultaneously. And of course, this is a bit uh, complicated to achieve, but you will uh, be surprised how easy it actually is. So here is what I did. Um, so we have here our background, and then for the first part where he is more or less static, is just moving a uh, very little bit, yeah, and his mouse is really looking cute. So in this area, I created a stabilized precomp and did everything essentially exactly as in the car tutorial, yeah, tracking it in Mocha, creating a stabilized precomp, and creating the mouse, including teeth and thumb and everything, inside the precomp. But now, if you look here and we go here frame by frame, you can see that. It's really a lot of movement here everywhere, yeah. And here, this is something you really do not want to track in Mocha anymore. So, uh, if he's basically every frame looks completely different, and this just involves some manual work. So, what I did therefore is I created adjustment layers, and I created first one adjustment layer and applied auto lip sync to it. But for all the details, like what is the mouse position. Uh, how to shape it in open and closed stage, all of this I just click continue, continue, continue and was not bothering about the details at all because in the next step, if you look at the effects, I really disabled all the effects except for the mouse split because what I wanted is to have just this mouse split here and now in the next step to manually keyframe the position of the mouse corners. Yeah, so this mouse split has here these uh, points A and B, so this left and right corner point, and if you just keyframe them manually frame by frame and make sure they follow the mouse, then you get all you need for this kind of shot. Yeah, I mean, what you get by the other effects is something like controlling how much it really opens and controlling um, how the open form of the mouse looks exactly. Uh, you can fine-tune it, you can fine-tune the closed form, but here everything is really moving so fast that we do not care about these details at all. And if we would have still left enabled all these others, yeah, these liquify effects and whatever, they would not move with these mouse corners. Therefore, I didn't want to have them here. And also some of these effects depend on these masks here, yeah, that are also introduced by auto lip sync, and since I do not want these effects, I don't bother about these uh, masks. I do not need to keyframe them, move them over time. Yeah, here it's really simple. Just run the wizard without changing anything. Keep everything by the default values. Then disable all effects except for the mouse split, and just keyframe this. And this will give you a mouse that just opens and closes, very basic, but is sufficient for these very quick shots here. And you can keyframe it manually very quickly and still get a good result very fast. So, yeah. so you can see here the mouse just follows here this uh, animal and yeah, all really easy. The last uh, thing that I did here also is at the very end, I added an edge blur effect. And what this does, you can see if I disable it here, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of motion blur here, and we just add some edge blur. Uh, you also get the motion blur for the mouse, which integrates it much better in the entire shot. Okay, why do I have here more than one such adjustment layer? Well, in between there are are areas where uh, Robin doesn't talk at all. So between there, I didn't want to, to keyframe anything. And also, I wanted to process in these areas faster, so therefore I just, just split this layer into several adjustment layers for each region where he's talking, and in between I, where he's not talking, I don't have any adjustment layer at all. Okay, that's it already for this quick tip. So again, side views can be made very easy, also partially hidden mouse is no problem. And finally, if you have a mo mouse that is very quickly moving, don't care about the details, just disable all the effects except for the uh, mouse split and keyframe the mouse corners. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for your attention and I hope you join in again for the next tutorial.